Hey guys, this video is for our second through fourth grade leaders for March week one, and we have a brand new life app for this month, Forgiveness, deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. And our new memory verse of the month is Colossians 3.13. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive just as the Lord forgave you. Well, week one, our Bible story is about the unmerciful servant, and our bottom line is forgive others because God forgives you. And just to go in a little bit more detail, because that's kind of vague, it says, we start the month with one of Jesus' parables recorded in the book of Matthew. Jesus told this parable because Peter asked a question about forgiveness. Peter might have thought that he was doing pretty well to say that he would forgive someone seven times, but Jesus raises the stakes and says that we ought to forgive others even more. So Jesus actually says not seven, but 77 times. Jesus shows what this means with a parable about a servant who has shown incredible forgiveness, yet doesn't do the same in return. So our bottom line is forgive others because God forgives you. And God's love for us is huge, and that love drives God to forgive us when we do something wrong. God can help us forgive people in our lives, and when we realize how much God has forgiven us, we can turn around and forgive people who might hurt us. And this might be difficult, but God can give us the help that we need to love others and show forgiveness. So that's what this week is all about. I'm um, starting off, we'd love for you to join us in the garage room at 8.20 and 10.20. It's a great time just to get our minds right and set for the morning to pray for each other and also for coffee and donuts. So totally worth it to get up here 10 minutes early. Um, it totally, I could not go without it on Sunday mornings um, serving just because it helps me really remember why I'm here and serving. Then just make sure you're in your small group area by 8.30 and 10.30. When kids start to roll in at 8.40 and 10.40, Make it personal. Ask kids um, about their week. Make sure you know all of their names. Don't ask them about Christmas and New Year. Forgot to take that line out. Um, help first-time guests to feel welcome. And then on your cart, you will each have a baggie of bingo chips. It looks like this. There's 150 bingo chips in the bag. When kids start to roll in, you're going to ask them to count out seven bingo chips. And then as more kids arrive, you're going to put all the chips back in the center and count, challenge them to count out 77 bingo chips all together, just to kind of see the difference between 7 and 77. Then when service begins at 9 and 11, you're going to do an interactivity called add them up. So you're going to encourage kids to select a partner, and then partners are going to stand facing each other with their hands behind their backs. And when you say, on your marks, get set, show, on show, each kid is going to hold up one through five fingers. So it could be one, could be three, whatever. The other hand stays behind their back. And then the pairs are going to add up the two hands that they showed, one from each player. And if the total for both is seven, then that pair is out and they have to sit down. So like if I put up a two and my partner put up a five, then we're out. Um, so then you're going to repeat with remaining pairs. Call out ready, set, show for each round as long as you have time and see who's the last one remaining. So then you're going to close it down by saying, so guys, what number were you trying to avoid? Yes, the number seven. So pay close attention to our Bible story today and see why seven is the wrong answer. So then you'll head down to large group. We have a live host and a live storyteller today, um, this week for our story. It's a great story about forgiveness. When you get back from large group, you're going to do an activity called Forgive or Not Forgive, and they're going to have a page in your cart, one that looks like this, big and says Forgive, one that's big and says Not Forgive. And you're going to um, get out your Forgive and Not Forgive signs, and then you're going to set those signs a few feet apart from each other in your small group area, and you're going to have your kids stand in between those two signs. You're going to point to them and let the kids read them out loud, and then you're going um, to read the review questions and the forgiveness scenarios below. And kids are going to decide if the statement indicates a choice to forgive or not forgive, and they will move to the correct sign. So just make sure that the kids return to the center before you ask the next question. And then you're going to ask the following questions from the review to, um, to review today's Bible story. So you have these two questions, and they're going to say forgive or not forgive. And then you have these scenarios from our life. So do we forgive? Are the person is the person forgiving or not forgiving in those scenarios? Um, and then you'll just close this activity down. Whoops, sorry. By saying, so guys, the reason today's Bible story seems so unfair is that the servant wasn't willing to do something that had been done for him. So he was forgiven, but then he wouldn't go forgive someone else. He refused to forgive the debt that he was owed even after his own much larger debt had been forgiven. So why do you guys think he refused to forgive? What do you think um, 
what do you think you might have done in this situation if you were that forgiven servant? And then kind of just talk about that for a little bit. And then you're going to say, so God is like the king in this story that Jesus told. He will always forgive you no matter what. Forgiveness isn't easy, but we can choose to forgive when we remember that we've been forgiven first. So let's choose to forgive others because God forgives you. So for the memory verse activity, it's called You Say This. And what you are going to need is this little staple um, paper clipped packet that says memory verse sentences on it. And it just has sentences um, from the memory verse. There are three total sentences from the memory verse. And you're going to divide your group into three teams, and then you're going to use these tips below to look up the new memory verse in the Bible. I do have some new Bibles on order so that we can have more Bibles for our small groups. And then you're going to have kids stand with their team, and you're going to hold up the first memory verse sentence and point to a team and have them read the sentence. Then you're going to hold up the next sentence and point to a different team and have them read that sentence. And then repeat the third sentence with the final team. And then continue repeating the verse, pointing to the different teams for each sentence during each round. So just teams will read different sentences, just getting kids familiar with the verse. And then after repeating the verse, ask kids what it means to put up with someone else. And then you'll close this down by saying, so great job, teams. And you're going to hold up the last page with the third sentence of the verse and say, this verse reminds us to forgive as the Lord forgave you. God isn't asking you to do something that he isn't willing to do himself, and God won't ever ask you to forgive without his help. He knows we'll be tempted, just like the servant in our story today, to hold on to our anger and frustration and refuse to forgive. When we start to feel that way, we can choose to forgive others because God forgives you. So remember, forgiveness fixes it. So then some optional small group discussion questions. Do you think forgiveness is a strength or a weakness and why? Why does forgiveness matter? How do you know if you have forgiven someone? What does it look like to forgive someone? How can it help you show forgiveness if you know and think about how everyone is made in the image of God? And is forgiveness about fairness? What if you don't think someone deserves to be forgiven? Good questions. And then to close it down in prayer, you don't need anything. Just lead kids in prayer using the conversation guide below. So it says, Peter asked Jesus how many times he should forgive someone. Seven times? Maybe you feel like you've had to forgive your brother 777 times just in the last week. But we shouldn't keep score. The point Jesus was trying to make is that it's not about a certain number. It's about doing what you can to fix it. And it's easier to fix it when we remember that we can forgive others because God forgives you. So let's pray and ask God to help us do that this week. So then just close down on prayer. Um, As adults come to pick up, just encourage kids to talk to their parents about how the king in today's story is like our king, our heavenly father. And remind them as they leave to forgive others because God forgives you. So we have new memory verse cards to hand out this week. Um, We have parent cues that will be going home with kids this week. Thank you to all of you that came to the safety meeting on Monday. I thought it was great. Great information for us to all have in our back pockets on Sunday. So thank you guys for coming. And thank you guys so much for serving. You all are so incredible. I just can't say it enough. So thank you, thank you, and we'll see you on Sunday.